Okay. A very good evening again to all of you. You know, uh, first, let us uh, wishes for our good health in this global pandemic. And uh, I know uh, everybody or everyone, everybody of us is taking care for our own uh, ourselves. Uh, so it is. As we know that today uh, we are after I mean having a several session of different courses of postgraduate diploma in sustainability science. As student of sustainability science, we have learned a number of theory, number of concepts of sustainable development and sustainability science. And now we have reads to one of the important course that is basic foundation to, I mean, summarizing all that basic foundation that is course number 16 on strategies and models for sustainability. But in that, now we have also discussed about different concept about infrastructure when we talk about sustainable development and what are the technology available for that and uh, many more i mean which is related to sustainable development right so in this session you know in models for sustainability today we are going to talk on sustainable development models and livelihood improvements in india is we are I mean, continuously discussing about all those principles, facts and figures, and those tenets, hypotheses, and a process of sustainable development in one side, in the other side, we also know that different project programs are implementing. And, uh, and uh, we're also planning different organization and uh, different, uh, and that uh, states, governments, also in the process of implementing many more projects and the programs related to sustainable development, because in front of us, we have sustainable development goals, which we are trying to achieve by 2030 and the beyond. Today, in this, looking into those, re-looking into those stories uh, as a models and today's session uh, I will try to uh, and bring back you now I know most of you must have read our study material self-learning material and today I am not going to update anything on that because you know when you talk about these sustainable development models models are very conceptual basic foundation and uh, what we are going to do talk about the existing models in India, as I told in the, in the beginning also in different session, and when you talk about the sustainable development models in India, India cannot have a single modern models that can be applicable uh, across India. So looking from that point of view, in our study material, in our course, we have identified three major areas, I mean, a region, one is in mountain region, as you know, Himalayan region, other is, you know, when you look into a mountain region, also some of the, uh, I mean, remote region, as we define remote in that time nowadays, I feel it is no more remote, like uh, place like tribal areas and uh, places like Northeast, they have different way of uh, that uh, social system that they always have been connection uh, with the nature and taking uh, important role in that uh, uh, bringing sustainable development. In fact, uh, uh, in general, and uh, you know, if you look into that in particular, their culture is very much with, with uh, environment conservation for sustainable development. So on the, and uh, if you're looking uh, to the, uh, the southern part of India, you know, most of the southern part of India as a representative sample, we can say that we have has uh, that long stretches of uh, coastal area, right? So those coastal areas, 
the socioeconomic their environment condition is very much different from other part of the country so we have uh, with that we have identified these three important areas we have put those as a case study which was uh, some of the models successfully implemented by different uh, government and government and organization in India that was implemented since 1970s and that shows positive impact and that shows in the improvement of livelihoods uh, to the, uh, in those community, right? So in this, you know, uh, we have uh, this block four, we have um, uh, that you need one, we have models and sustainable development and you need to have sustainable development in Himalaya. Here we are going to talk about the existing models and which was successfully implemented by uh, Zipan Institute of Himalayan Environment Development. Then Sustainable Integrated Farming System, as you know, MS Farming Resource Foundation is taking key roles in uh, and, and bring, improving livelihoods of the uh, local tribal people across the uh, these uh, different uh, southern states like in Orisha and the coastal communities in Tamil Nadu and so on. So we are going to talk on that. And then unit for I, as I told you, uh, culture plays an important role and then some of the community for them and the environment and conservation is their culture. So we are also looking those and uh, that uh, um, way of uh, uh, their uh, culture in uh, uh, protecting the environment, improving their own livelihoods. And that have a I mean, uh, that um, long-term vision towards conservation of um, uh, their surrounding that we will do. So when you talk about, before we started to the case study, then, you know, most of us uh, you know some are grassroots level workers, some are policy makers, some are, I mean, uh, uh, fresh graduates, uh, some are research scholar. So before starting to the models, uh, I mean, starting into the uh, those case study, what I mentioned here, let us have a quick look into the basic on models and modeling. That is very, in a, I mean, very basic foundation. We are not going to in details. Uh, now, when we talk about models, you no, know, it's a very, I mean, when uh, we look those uh, this term these words in academic way, sometimes we were started to think, oh, what is that? Which we started to think it's a very complicated way. But if you really look into the simple meaning, that's why I always, I mean, uh, suggest or I always increase to look any and complicated word in a simple language. Just look into the simple mean, meaning and in your own logic. So in that way, when you talk about a model, model is a simplified representation of reality, right? So if we look into why model is necessary and how to develop model, and if you look into those terms and if you are looking, is a sustainability expert or as a student of sustainability science, it is a very simple way we are applying model in every day, in every process in our day-to-day -day life, right? The beginning from your, what kind of clothes you are wearing and what kind of food you have to uh, uh, take uh, in different season, right? And the simple way is in front of us is when we are going to the urban place or when you, where you are going to cross a road, you look into the light system that it's uh, installed there that indicates something, okay, well, uh, it is right time to close the road or not, right? This is a kind of models, no. So in short, we can say that when, for example, if beginning, from, I mean, uh, annual expenses, as a parent, uh, as a parent, what you did, you plan uh, the future of, especially in India, future of your children. So it's a kind of model, that's your kind of model. You look, you have your own vision for achieving those vision and uh, uh, then you plan accordingly. That's a process of modeling, right? So, so in that way you can't quantify, okay, if I, uh, I, if I save this much money and in a year I can save that, this much amount when my uh, children reach in that 15 years or 16 years, they may need this much amount. So in that way you plan it. 
So in short, what we can say that a model, the output of the model is that you can it can give us quantification of all those re, all those result, exploration of uh, result to different situation future trends. Sorry. So when you develop or when you planning, as I told you, in a simple logic model is a, your planning, right? And to visualize yourself. So to visualize or to have a long term plan that, you know, what we have seen into, I want this is my objective. That means, for example, you want to groom your children or you want to construct your house in the 10 years, then what kind of house and what, um, how much money you want to spend on that. So accordingly, you have to start. That means first your objective is output. So basic component of developing a model is in our output. First is output, you need to have an output, means it's a vision, your ambition, your objective. Then accordingly, you put input, right? What you have to do, then what is the scope of that? Now, how you have to utilize that? Then application, how to apply it, where to apply it. So these are the basic components of uh, that uh, uh, that uh, model. Then, if you look into the stages, you can look into logical. You, I mean, let us look in a very simple logical way. Uh, it can develop in three stages. One is that one is you know development. It is development is you visualize you started to think on. Thinking is a concept. You develop the concept, right? For example, you want to see your beliefs. It's a sustainable belief. You started to develop, okay, if my I want to develop and a, uh, my belief is a model of a sustainable development, sustainable beliefs, sustainable beliefs, then you started to bring a concept. You started to talk with some of people. Then you, okay, we want to do it this way. We have to do it this way then evaluation, then you started to analyze, okay, you want to do that if we put to, to we uh, bring this input and this has to be done, this has not to be done, this kind of analysis is start to start after developing those concepts. Then, then you start application means starting the process. So these are the basic fundamental stages of developing a model. So again, if you technically look or academically look, you can uh, see models in different various uh, variety way, right? Depending upon the specific uh, purpose you are going to use, specific situation you are going to develop in that way. So it can be of you know conceptual type when we are talking about maybe empirical, conceptual, physically based or mixed. We cannot we need not to go in details. This is a only and when you are is a student of sustainability as an academic uh, academically we need to understand the basic foundation of those areas. That's why we are bringing this particular unit here. The integration type, you know, when we talk about sustainability, you know, we have to understand different aspect in a holistic way. Here, this kind of model play an important role. It may be analytical, numerical, or mixed. Then mathematical type, that's, that is, also you know, stochastic, deterministic, special type. This is also very important for sustainability, student of sustainability, right? Then temporal time, static, dynamic, or mixed. And for example, then that's why when we talk about water set management also, which uh, we always talk about adaptive management, adaptive process. So in that way, we, we can such kind of model when you do that temporal uh, type, uh, it can look from temporal type. Right. So these are the types you will look from uh, those uh, from academic view, uh, to, uh, from um, from the, uh, the lens of academics. Right. Then, in really, if you look as a student of sustainability and in the areas of sustainable development, right, it is better to look into this way, because when we talk about sustainable development, sustainability model, you know, first point is in a, as an expert, you have to develop the model then you have to visualize it and then you have to show to the people. As I told you, as also we have already discussed about different processes beginning from awareness, uh, uh, from awareness to the, uh, the involvement people and more. So if you, if uh, in that way, 
then uh, and then what kind of information you need to be I mean bring or to show to the stakeholders right so we have when we talk about developing in sustainability or looking towards sustainability or stakeholders is a very variety you know it may particularly be looking also that uh, people's uh, are I mean, from different background, then if you look, uh, look uh, that uh, look different background, there may be uh, research, uh, research scholars, there may be uh, common people, there may be policy maker planners. So in that way, it can look into quantitative models, pictorial, uh, that pictorial visualization model. This is very important when uh, uh, we go to the grassroots level to convince the, uh, that uh, local people then conceptual model, this is important to show to the policy maker planners. Then first one, quantitative model is important for the technical people, means for the scientists and even you now we can say uh, for uh, those policy maker plans. Then standardizing models, it's also very important. This is also for people, technical people like academic technical. Then physical models, these are some of the I mean, way of uh, that categorizing the model, right? So I will not go into uh, then. So uh, then I will not. So and uh, in the first course, we have looked into the some of the Zenian models on sustainability. I am only bringing back so that we can link with today's what we are going to discuss. So in that four uh, basic models were we are discussed. The first was three pillar model. The second was the capital stock model. The third was the prism model. The fourth was the Eid model. Many more models, but in a general way, if you look into the basic foundation of sustainable development, these are the very common and uh, these are the very famous, uh, I mean, uh, models. If you look into the three models, if you remember that thing, it shows that model explain about the interaction between the three pillars of so environment, economy, and society. Right. So when you develop a model for sustainable development, you have to look those three basic foundation, the relationship, right? And that look into the intricacies, intricacies of three these three important uh, pillars and uh, its sub pillars, right? Sub component. In the same way, you know, the capital stock model. We talk about that when uh, we talk about the economic growth, especially in economic growth. Uh, that uh, we are looking for uh, towards uh, for achieving those and uh, when we're talking about sustainable development model looking from the uh, this economic point of view we have to understand this that it was uh, I mean, developed by world bank 1994 you know then we talk about the prism model so these are the i mean the basic model it is i mean uh, uh, that uh, what I can say uh, that this is uh, depending on the level how you are going to use these are the simple modified model of what we have seen here social environment economic pillar there is a modification of those models Egg of sustainability this is very much fundamental because when you talk about sustainable development uh, and whatever happening in pollution, environment degradation, it is the interaction, the relation between ecosystem and the people. When this relation is back, or if there is imbalances in this relation, then we may not be able to achieve the sustainability rate. So those that model of IUCN 1994, Egg of Sustainability, explain the relation of that, how ecosystem is important for people and how people is important for ecosystem, right? So when you talk about uh, the another point here, we have to recall, uh, remember is that, you know, sustainable development and bank sustainable are two different characteristics of the complex heterogeneous system representing society and the environment. The reason why I'm on, again bringing here is that sometimes we feel that sustainable development and sustainability, the term sustainable is same. In fact, it is not if you look literally, and not only that, if you look in it, logically also if you look in, I mean, uh, how to understand, how to use this, uh, or how to understand this, this uh, principle of sustainability, right? So in that, 
then sustainable development is a process. And that sustainability is the goal of sustainable development. So that's why we have sustainable goal, uh, subintense as disease uh, to be achieved by 2030 in that, you know, our goal is a sustainable planet. And sustainable goal is a process, so we have subentine different goals. The sustainable development is a process, that's why we have different goals of different areas. So, so when we are implementing or we are trying to implement, we are trying to achieve our goal of sustainability through the approach of sustainable development, through the process of sustainable development, we need to measure the process from time to time. What is the process? Whether we are able to achieve our goal? That is why. And in which area, what kind of model, how we have to achieve it? So that's why here we need the model modeling, right? And some of the selected model in uh, here, India, as I told you, one is Himalayan region. Uh, we have Trakan, coastal community and cultural landscape. So if you look into Himalaya, you know, uh, Himalaya play an important role uh, in the, that, uh, this climatic uh, country, uh, that uh, climate of the Indian subcontinent. And moreover, you know, India being an agrarian uh, country, when basically we depend on agriculture, you know. So the role played by Himalaya is very, I mean, unique, right? And uh, if you look into that, if you look into the as a, I mean, uh, uh, as a uh, sustainable student, when we started to think about uh, that Himalaya, you must have seen from Jammu Kashmir to the Arunachal Pradesh, the inter Nordis, uh, I mean, from uh, to Indo, uh, Indo, uh, that uh, Burma, that uh, hill, uh, that mountain ranges, hill ranges, they also include that in Himalaya, right? So, when uh, you look into the mountain, you will see that there are a lot of diversity in your climatic condition, right? Even in 500 kilometer stretch also, you will find out diversity in climatic condition, microclimatic condition. In the same way, when we have that climatic diversity, environmental diversity, and definitely we know that there are relation between environment and culture. Right. Culture created the environment and environment created the culture. So in that way, automatically diversification in diversification in culture also. In the same way, their livelihood condition. It's, I mean, diverse. And uh, if you look into con physical condition, landform condition, you know, uh, and the social complication uh, when you talk about sustainable development in Himalayan region, you know, there are some opportunities also there in the same side. In the same time, we have some, I mean, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, limitation also there. Say, let us see that environment and diversity. One more is that I'm not taking anything from others today. I'm, we are discussing entirely based on our study material, right? So one is environment and diversity, as I told you, an area of climate change. Diversity from, you started from Zamu in the Kashmir, you will find out that, yeah, that environment and condition is very different from that of Arunachal. In between in the central Himalayan, uh, there also you will see uh, diversity. For example, in Kumaun Himalaya and Garhwal Himalaya, they have different, I mean, if you look in the microclimatic condition, climate types is different, so is the biodiversity. So we have biological diversity it is very high. Then we know uh, water resources, hydroenergy is, I mean, enough water resources still, though today we are facing a lot of issues because of climate change, set aside that issues. Then when we have, I mean, diversity in culture, diversity in uh, that uh, society, social structure, then automatically it has become, you know, if you look to the interior straits from north to south, and uh, uh, then uh, north to south, no, and east to west of these um, ranges, you will find out it's a repository of traditional knowledge of natural sources use. Because the way 
that people are using in Himachal Pradesh of particular natural sources is very much different even from the Kumaon region of Ujjarakhan. In the same way, uh, some of the resources used by Sikkim cannot, is not same how uh, the other tribes are using in Arunachal. So in that way, you know, high degree of human tolerance to physical stress also. You know. So the difficulty part, the limitation part is, you know, because of the, you know, land form, difficult terrain, natural risks, and uh, you know, population are sparse and poor communication infrastructure, uh, low level of indigenous financial camp capacity. That is very one important. And if you look into it, we're selling the Turkan Himalaya, and the most of the ecologists like, you know, uh, SP Singh, professors SP Singh and others, the term, uh, this male out migration, then uh, that feminization of poverty, then, and then uh, they use the word and uh, that uh, money, uh, that type of, uh, that uh, money order based uh, then um, income, because male out migrate to the cities and uh, they are sources of income because there, you know, because of the uh, that soil condition, because of the uh, condition over there, uh, there's agriculture, their food production system, uh, system is subsistence, right? And more, and uh, uh, because of this, you know, uh, difficult terrain, other, you know, uh, low level of advanced technology, and uh, it's very difficult to reach uh, easily about extension of, uh, extension education or extension awareness over there, right? So managing in Himalaya for sustainable development is not an easy task, right? So some of the principles which I'm trying to, uh, I mean, bring here is, you know, to develop or to manage natural resource management, to develop models there, or to have a participatory approach of sustainable development and reliable improvement there. Some principle was identified by different author. Of that, some uh, few are that, we need to realize the opportunities and concerns what we are talking just now for development of mountain perspective from the way of mountain perspective. That's why I told India cannot have a single model that can apply a coast nation. So then the point here, second point is very, very, very important then that whenever we uh, talk about an issue uh, and uh, when we are trying to find out a solution for that, one come in our mindset is that we do not have this. We will not be able to. So instead of talking to that, what we have with this, how can we do that, that we have to do. Then build up the local knowledge. No, local knowledge is very important. That's, that is, then the people should uh, make, we should make means uh, people to realize the real cause of given of a given intervention by promoting their activity. It means uh, participation of uh, people is important. Then, as you know, uh, the responsibility and their belongingness should be bring. So looking into those principal theory, as you know, Zivi Pan, Institute of Himalayan Environment and Development, uh, Himalayan, Himalayan, that's renamed, uh, now it is renamed as Zivi Pan Institute of Himalayan Environment. Uh, and the climate change, environment, environment, sustainable development, and climate change. So they identify at the last, and the, during the, in the, started from 1980s, 1990s, they started to implement this kind of program like Rural Technology Demonstration Training Center. They developed that and uh, with an objective of environment contribution, uh, the necessary resource utilization, and uh, then uh, library improvement in that area, right? So uh, here also, uh, as we know, we have to uh, bring uh, those principles of uh, sustainable development talk, that talk about equal equity, then rationality of using the resources, then environmental conservation, so on. This, uh, this figure uh, reflect all those principles, right? How to link all that thing. That is in our study material also. Then what actually, let us uh, look into what exactly that real technology demonstration and training center model. So I will not go into detail all this thing. No, uh, the basic principle, objective application and all that is basic principle is as you know, uh, to improve their livelihood. When you talk about improve their livelihood, we have to respect their 
tradition and norms. We have to understand what kind of their, I mean, uh, existing library system is over there. So if you look into that Himalayan area, you will find out that agriculture, we need to uh, improve their agriculture. So the objective of uh, that model of RTDTC is to develop participatory because when you talk about, uh, I mean, such kind of terrain environment, it's very difficult to I mean, make it some success uh, without um, uh, community participation. So participation uh, should be there and should be the, uh, was the main objective. In fact, it is in one sentence what they are saying that uh, the basic principles learning by doing. So in the process of implementation, uh, then they will learn and in learn also, they will do that, right? So, uh, and uh, that was applied in few uh, area, few uh, that, uh, that uh, district in Terigara, Udrapayak and Chamoli and the technology, core technology they use. One is protected cultivation. Second one is organic composition by fertilizer. Third one is off-farm technology, and the fourth one is other supported technology, depending. That's why uh, even in this area also, you cannot say that in Himalaya, we can we have to implement this model. It may be better because of, the, uh, as I told you, diversity in anything, diversity in everything and anything. So in protected cultivation means we need to protect, you know, uh, that uh, for that poly house, net house, poly fit, this technology used then uh, when we know that uh, that soil fertility is one of the important issues over there, in, especially in mountain areas. So, organic compost and biofertilizer is one of technology. And through that, we they uh, that they, um, give training of biocomposting, vermicomposting, vermivores, as well as culture, and then integrated into their farming system. And again. And uh, when you talk about uh, improving their livelihood, only subsistence agriculture cannot work for long term. So the uh, trend which they are, we are giving training in off farm technology like mushroom cultivation, honey uh, rearing, bioprospecting of wild semi domesticate uh, that fruits. Then other bio uh, supporting technologies like bio uh, briquetting zero energy cool chamber, water harvesting tank technology is very much important when we develop. Uh, this kind of thing, uh, water harvesting. We know that enough rainfall is there, enough uh, uh, that uh, that uh, water is there, but harvesting is also important for long term, right? Uh, then these are some of the technologies. I will not define so much about this protecting cultivation. See, uh, for uh, one important uh, here, I would like to sloping water set environmental engineering technologies. This is what they are using this kind of technology used on this Himalayan range, uh, that Himalayan range uh, for such kind of models, right? A process they follow is they identify the selection. This is a simple process, as you know, identify the uh, area, and then we have to understand them. PRA, participatory real appraisal, the uh, date is, then we conduct it, then, then we uh, take their participation and then after that then conceptualize is and finalize it then they were giving training as I told you for all those technology we were talking about then and then to uh, that implementation happen then they learn in the process of uh, learning also they will do their uh, activities and uh, by doing that also they learn more experience and uh, regular uh, then uh, implementing organization with the participation of the farmers, uh, they regularly monitor the thing and the impact of all those things, right? So these are some of, uh, this is the <coughs> technology as we have uh, on the, the process. Then, uh, so in that, what they find out, they find out is uh, during 2000 to 2008, they implemented it and uh, I missed one slide that was already there in your study material successfully implemented then their income that uh, up uh, at household level income uh, that their earning capacity increases and even fit security is also one of the uh, i mean uh, that component where they can there uh, whenever there is uh, what you can say drought situation anything 
uh, that has become one of their uh, I mean, source of income and source of food. So this was this is I mean successfully implemented. The second is sustainable integrated farming system. Uh, when we talk last class also we talk about uh, uh, that uh, limitation of uh, a green revolution and that calls for paradigm shift to uh, Ibergen revolution. When we talk about Ibergen revolution, uh, and the basic principle is enhancement of productivity and perpetuity uh, without associated ecological harm, right? Ecological harm. And not only ecological harm, when you talk about improving livelihood, there should not, not be any social harm because we have to follow it. At least you know, when you talk about sustainability, we have to appreciate or we have to respect not only your environment, the social there yeah, and uh, that social norms there. Yeah. So that is the objective of Ibergen evolution. And we also talk about when you talk about Ibergen evolution, it has different component talks about, it was talking about bioavailages, ecological, ethics, equity and community learning center, like and Himalayan uh, in Bangladesh, we talk about the training center and all that thing in that way, there must be community learning centers. So that's, so one of the model which was, uh, I mean, implemented up uh, by uh, uh, one of the you know, renowned non-government organization, Amish Farm International Foundation is integrated farming system. And uh, that integrated farming system was implemented uh, in local participation in some district of Tamil Nadu. This is the um, visualization um, structure of your integrated farming system. You know, when you talk about integrated farming system in the farming system, you know, uh, it, it will integrate about your crop production. Users visualize, I know uh, some of, I, I'm sure some of you must have been from the coastal area. They will find out there, there you can have cropping farm. In the same farm, you can rear your livestock. Then the same farm, you can have agroforestry, you can have aquaculture and so on, right? So in that way, what we get, that the environment will be improved, and education and employment will be given, and then economy will be improved, and then there will be, I mean, equity will also be bring in that community in that local. This is the uh, framework of the integrated farming system. When you talk about conventional farming system, as you know, uh, in conventional farming system, what we did, uh, monoculture, even you no. Know, uh, maybe in uh, some time uh, in uh, that uh, uh, if we do not follow monoculture also uh, that mixed cropping also uh, we talk about only the cropping right that is next of about the crops only vegetables only we do not integrate with other components so in here we have to integrate the another component right so we'll come there so from 1996 to 2002, uh, they implemented in some selected blocks. Nah, but I will not go into this uh, objective. Mode. See, this is how it works. We will be able to understand from here. When uh, we have integrated farming system, as I told you, simple uh, example in Manipur also, in my own instead, we follow this integrated farming system in our valley area. You know, in the uh, in the uh, in one example, let us take an example in a hectare of land, and they dig out uh, the pond, right? In the all the the, uh, the hell, uh, that boundary of the uh, uh, that particular uh, that uh, fill, uh, that particular hectare of land, in the boundary, uh, they will make the pond, right? Then uh, they will uh, do fisheries, and uh, in the same area what they will do in the bun, in the in the bun, uh, that uh, margin, fill margin, what they will do, they will cultivate uh, the uh, vegetables from time to time, and, uh, and they will have poultry deer, right? So in that way, when you construct, you have the poultry farm in your uh, fish pond, then uh, those um, output that uh, from the poultry, that uh, scatter and others that will fertilize the uh, fish. So in that way, integrated farming uh, has important role in that. See, uh, 
these are some of the, uh, here you will see demonstration project component. They have the extent of fish spawn, they have fish spawn, they, they have poultry set, they have pigeon cage, right? Here they have pigeon cage. Then they cultivate Sesparnia aculate, aculate. These are nitrogen fixing, some nitrogen fixing species that can improve it, uh, improve uh, the soil fertility. Then, then demonstration and then calf rearing, then mushroom cultivation. So integrated it. So when you talk about the gym, uh, this coastal area, what uh, that uh, what is more important is then to, you know uh, to protect from uh, the natural disaster like you know uh, this uh, cyclone and others and the bio, uh, that is biofencing is also one of the approaches they use. Even biofencing is important uh, for uh, to uh, from other uh, that also. The impact of the project of that project implemented project, the cost benefit ratios, what they study is that when total expenditure that that is income are taken into account, the marginal large farmers are so better performance and are similar. Means to that marginal farmers they have more benefit. So that shows that such kind of uh, that uh, model will be successfully implemented, it can be implemented across the, that coastal area of the region in our, especially in our country, right? So some of the key learning and the way forward is uh, that demonstrate in some farming community, uh, uh, what they have seen and that, uh, that give us, that give them scope of getting income throughout the year. When you, you have integrated farming system in the fisheries, I mean, fishing time, you can get income from the fisheries pond and, uh, you know, uh, the poultry, you ultimately will come from, uh, and, I mean, regularly income will come from the poultry. You know, uh, these are some of the important, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, way of improving their livelihood. Then reduce dependency on external inputs. For example, if you follow only the poultry or only the fish farming or only the uh, that uh, uh, crop, uh, that uh, the cultivation of crops, you know, you need fertilizers and others. So, in, for, for example, that all these shows here, the cycle over here, you know, how those uh, component have, which component give input to which component. In that way, you know, it reduced the dependence on external and that input. The environment friendly, and reduce the due to vagaries of nature. You know, sometimes if one component is not working, for example, uh, let us take example of bird flow. Because of bird flow, your poultry is not successful. Poultry is not successful. Then automatically that loss can be cop up by your another component like fisheries, like in other, right? Then in that way, it gives a several lines. Then the third uh, example which I would like to bring is, you know, uh, cultural and landscape based model. Uh, here, you know, uh, I want to see uh, uh, here why we are taking this particular area is I told you that when you talk about environment and conservation, when you talk about sustainable development and some of the communities uh, which used to be said that it is very remote area or even I can say that uh, this modest uh, area, now it is uh, a few of uh, some of the part of uh, that uh, region is no more remote, uh, but uh, the culture we follow, culture uh, followed by different tribe, they do not need education for sustainable development because their culture is sustainable development. Sustainable development is their culture, so that reflected. And if you look into their natural landscape, the farming system, and everything you will find out uh, that is, I mean, intertwined or that is attached with, with their culture. And uh, as a student from different background, you must be, we always talk about the impact, negative impact of uh, that uh, slash uh, and uh, that uh, Zoom agriculture or shifting agriculture, it's last in the agriculture or Zoom agriculture, right? 
So in fact, if you look into from uh, from if you first look into that, uh, except in the process, some of the process there are some issues in the process. But if you look, if you try to modify that process, zoom agricultural sitting agriculture uh, have not much negative impact what you are thinking of. It is, if you look from energy, the way it cycles the energy, the way it cycles the nutrient. So it has high energy output with low energy input. That has been studied by different authors. And one of them, and one of the final who started to work in that since 1970s, isn't it? He is Professor P.S. Ram, Ram Krishnan. When he was in Notice Hill University, he was in Notice Hill University. So, and I want to share this that when this NAPED project was uh, about to implement in that time, you know, uh, that uh, the implementing of international organization that uh, Sustrain must be Canadian uh, international, Canadian, sometimes I forget the Canadian government, they were reluctant to, I mean, since as you know, in that time, uh, now still also we have social political issues of Bajia, insurgencies, issues of Bajia in that, particularly in that time. So, so uh, because of that, uh, that government, that, uh, that funding organization, they were reluctant to, I mean, give fund, but he convinced them, convinced to them this is very much important. We have to respect and we have to involve them, then only no one can stop. That in that way, uh, that NAPED project was, uh, I mean, implemented. Uh, so uh, in that, uh, you know, uh, when we, so in that, you know, when you look into this part of the country, we'll find out this, uh, the beliefs is a part of an ecosystem. An ecosystem composed of, you know, there you will uh, see that ecosystem is your beliefs, your forest, uh, forest ecosystem and your agricultural crop, that, uh, the agricultural area, cropping area. And their livelihood is the output of the interaction between these different components. So that is why uh, uh, for them uh, that sustainable development is our culture. When they talk about, for example, when we, uh, they talk about, okay, let us uh, for cutting a particular species of tree, they will not easily, I mean, cut that. The another limitation in that, uh, the another limitation is, you know, uh, because of the increased human population and others, this is the, uh, this is one of the limitation to, or this is threats to that uh, culture of sustainable development. So how to make it those threats into a, I mean, advantage? That is what Professor, Swam, uh, Professor Ramakrishnan uh, did it. So in that, what, uh, in those form of agriculture, no, two will he look. One is incremental part which in that uh, one has to build step-by-step step upon the traditional ecological knowledge available in the society so as to avoid drastic change in the land use system that may lead to social disruption for regions that may, that may be ecological, social, cultural, you know? Because when you say that you, this is, uh, example, simple that way, if you say that, don't do slash and uh, burn agriculture, they will not easily accept you because that is part of their culture, right? So in that, there may be social disruption also, ecological are uh, that cultural disruption also will happen. Another is a counter way. Uh, then wherein one follows the ecological contours of the landscape but to create appropriate agroforestry model with a view to effectively integrate ecosystem as part of an overall landscape management strategy. So the point here is that one is an incremental way we can integrate our modern way. As I told you that the threats, increasing human population as a threat to and that sustainability, their culture of sustainability. If we blended those their culture with the modern technology, then that threats can be, become an advantage. 
So integration is important. That is what uh, this uh, Professor, Swan, uh, Professor uh, Ramakrishnan used, right? So this, from this, you will find out linking that ecological social system that very much of this there is. One is the ecological bo box and the social box, right? Ecological box, what do you know? And system were important is, when we talk about uh, that agriculture system of Madhya, you know, you have to look in from at the plot level and plot level agroecosystem analysis needs to be done. The plot, that plot level agroecosystem, when you analyze that, you will find out that social response, social, that relation with the society at plot level, then that society response is then you, I mean, in that way, for a system analysis, you look in the forest. So in that way, this ecological boxes and social boxes, as I told you, three important is your cropping area, the other is your delays, the third one is forest. And so the forest component, cropping component, when you talk about of that agriculture in a mountain area, and then there is a Lewis close relation with uh, forest. So not only in the Himal, uh, this uh, our northeast uh, area, but if you look those agricultural system over there in uh, that uh, inter uh, this Himalayan track, you will find out that the relation between uh, this forest component agricultural component. Sometimes in you know uh, even in Himalaya also you will find out in a village one part of. Uh, uh, one part, northern or, or upper part, or second, um, they will uh, miss. Uh, they will leave it for a um, uh, for a season uh, without any plantation, right? So that cycle they used to take, right? So in that way, there is intricate relation between ecological boxes and social bo uh, boxes. So in plot level, what uh, what is relation? Sustainable livelihood is happen in short term when we look into from in this short term benefit sustainable livelihood, when you have sustainable livelihood in short term, then if you are repeatedly following those model and uh, in long term it gives so sustainable regional development. As I told you, and here when we talk about uh, this model, you have to understand the issues over here is that when there was not much population in there, you know, here said you will feel in Zoom cycle, you will find out forces here, you will find out a cropping phase cycle then Freshly abandoned. First year all fellow, second year fellow, third year fall, four year fellow, five year plant and cropping phase, right? It is after five years. It is to be after 10 years. So it minimized, suddenly minimized. Because of that, when it is naturally now here you do not have any external input. Whatever they follow this uh, cycle is when you live as a fellow for another uh, 10 years, 12 years, that uh, automatically the soil become fertile. But when it, you reduce this gap it, to three years or four years or five years, then, then you know, fertility, uh, that uh, fertility you know, will have a question. That's why there is a need for our that uh, blending the technology or introducing modern technology and that also uh, we are coming to the uh, that also uh, then i will show you uh, so, uh, will that come to nepet model say so the beginning setting goes an ecological journey uh, when you implement uh, that thing uh, what he's uh, what he see was that First, in that village, in that uh, particular area, they identify, they look into what are the traditional value species, what are the scientific, scientific, I mean, uh, region behind that they have studied, right? So based on those, then they reorient or reintroduce to their cropping system. In that way, uh, uh, that particular project building upon traditional uh, agriculture in Nagaland was implemented uh, by uh, that uh, uh, Association of International Institute uh, of Rail Reconstruction is the first uh, international funded development project in Nagaland in 1994, right? 
So it was introduced in two phases. First phase was uh, 1995 to 2000, is Nagaland Environment Protection Economic Development. And uh, phase two, it started from 2001 to 2006, is Nagaland Empowerment of People through Economic Development. So why I wasn't explaining all this is that is you will be able to read easily and these are common concept, right? So the main aim when they introduced in the first phase was to develop sustainable management of land based by the intensification of its class and the brand cultivation system using a gun. Second, the strategy Susan was farmer-led development because we cannot let that development by sci uh, scientists or technologies. So that's why farmer strategy Susan was farmer-led development. Then testing and demonstration of agroforestry-based intensified system. Then phase two was implemented with the main aim of to reinforce access and import traditional institution and agents of delivery mechanism and to engage communities in agro-based income generation activities through micro credit and support community-based nature resource management, right? Because uh, you know, uh, when you talk about traditional system, their traditional institution play an important role. And what are their achievements? The major achievement was, is, you know, the concept of growing trees as a regular zoom crop was widely accepted. For they used to cut debris trees, but after, I mean, this intervention, then they start to grow the trees also as a part of regular zoom crop and adopted by both farmers and entrepreneurs all over the state. Then the project had planted over 6 million trees during the phase one and fully recognizing the success and also building upon the expertise and the experience NEPET, Nagaland government declared 1999 is the year of tree plantation, right? Then, uh, you know, uh, then NEPET in consultation with village communities facilitated the establishment of a crop zoning system for village of, no, because that's I told you that type, that should be uh, that uh, that uh, village is a part of uh, that ecosystem. So uh, that accordingly, situation low, uh, 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 based on the where the village is located and where uh, their forest and relation between their forest and distance, other uh, factors looking uh, by integrating other factor, they have uh, identified different role for. Uh, different agriculture purpose, purpose. And marketing concern were all addressed during phase two and now clear market linkages are being developed by staff. This is very much important. So in that way, a number of agriculture produce market committees were I mean, formed and the village marketing committees were also formed. So through that way, when you know, uh, that include in the process of uh, that uh, documentation also, and uh, many more species identify and they're able to document the risk floral diversity in that area with important local people. Then their traditional council, like traditional village council, have progressed so much in their worldview and perspective on development that they are now uh, even breaking as well tradition, giving women access to land. That use, then they do not give now through this process they started to, they have given that. That women empowerment has become one of the significant achievement uh, after phase two. Then the women in general and well, in, so in that way, you know, uh, that participation and uh, that uh, equity and the principle of uh, social equity is bring. So if you summarize that, uh, when we blended that traditional way of uh, that uh, cultivation practice, agricultural practice with a modern technology, modern modern way of understanding, then it will it was successfully implemented. And uh, that is how, why, uh, uh, that, uh, that is why uh, that scientists like Paul Professor P. S. Ramakrishnan always talk about that when we as a scientist or academic, when we talk about uh, sustainability, about environment degradation, we first need to understand what is like local situation over there. We have to accept are and we should appreciate the role by traditional, uh, their traditional cult, uh, norms, custom, and culture over here. So uh, these are uh, from our study material. Thanks all, thank you.